this is the story of a large part of India. More than 80% of our farmers own less than three acres of land. During our journey over the last five years, uh, we've come to build about five different products in our portfolio. What was previously done by using, you know, 10, 12 labors over a period of four, five days, we're now able to do it in four hours, which means we're able to deliver uh, an efficiency of more than 80%. Farming is a farmer based out of uh, rural Mysore. He's been doing farming for several generations. His grandfather owned a large piece of land, but over generations as the land got uh, bifurcated between his brothers and siblings, he today owns three acres. His children are all moved to cities. They don't find agriculture to be a viable proposition. And this is the story of a large part of India. More than 80% of our farmers own less than three acres of land. They're all facing the same challenge of finding labor to come and work for them, especially in a country where manual labor is an integral part of agriculture. When you have more than 21% of the rural youth uh, traveling to urban cities year on year, it's a huge depletion. These are all some of the facts that I've picked up along the way on my journey to rural India. What was more unnerving for me or worrisome was how would the actual labor community react to this? And in 2013, when we were working with one of our products in a field, which was a paddy planter, we had women also doing manual paddy planting in another corner. They got curious about what we were tinkering around with and decided to come talk to us. They saw that we were working on an equipment that was going to plant paddy, which was essentially taking away their jobs. But to our surprise, these women came and told us, we're really glad you're working on this because I know my daughters are not coming to plant party and we're really worried where we'd be eating food from in the near future. So I'm glad you guys are actually coming out and working to build mechanization for us. That was a huge myth buster for us. And you know, we picked up a couple of myths along the way. We were looking at advisors to come and help us to build and design our products. And along the way, you know, we were doing our testing, working in our fields. We'd actually have farmers who would park their bikes on the main road, walk almost a kilometer into the field where we were working, and come and just look at what we were doing. Just by looking, they would say, you know what, Devi, you need to fix that angle over there, change the thickness of that plate over there. And these are not engineers. They are nowhere trained in any kind of formal education. But this is the kind of inherent knowledge that they have gained for so many years and years and years of education. So the belief that rural agriculture was illiterate was a huge myth for us to be busted. We also thought that we wanted to build low-cost equipment. We wanted to make equipment that were humanly drawn so that the farmer wouldn't need to invest a lot of money into this equipment. So we came out with our first manually drawn product and we took it to an exhibition and we showcased it. But to our surprise, we got a lot of backlash from the community. We had farmers come and tell us, you know what, we'd like to have a high-tech product too. We have aspirations. We want to see uh, great technology coming to agriculture as well. We want to have uh, power-driven, solar-driven, electrical-driven equipments. And that was something which was also a huge myth-buster for someone who was, you know, all her life in an urban city, read about agriculture only through newspaper and media and all of that. So during our journey over the last five years, uh, we've come to build about five different products in our portfolio. Uh, this is our sugarcane planter. And uh, it, what it does is it plants uh, sugarcane uh, using a tractor attachment. What was previously done by using, you know, 10, 12 labors over a period of four, five days, we're now able to do it in four hours, which means we're able to deliver uh, an efficiency of more than 80%. Uh, but this is just the tip of the tip of the iceberg. I'm only talking about mechanical intervention, which is one input in agriculture, and I'm talking about just a few set of uh, products in agriculture in general. But if you look at the amount of intervention there is, it's, it's huge. Um, we have space for finance guys, we have space for supply chain management, we have space for education, training. You know, this is a sector that really could help with a lot of solutions from each of you out here, and we're very happy to have you among us. Thank you.